Next on the list, we have British Columbia. BC is an extremely diverse province that has a bit of everything. Mountains, ocean, desert, a big city, some smaller cities, small towns, forests, islands, and much more. There are a lot of places you could move to in the province that will offer you a completely different lifestyle than others. So as always, five things you need to know before making the move to British Columbia. Number one, geography. British Columbia is honestly one of the only provinces in Canada where you can say you have almost everything when it comes down to the geography of the province. Here's a list. You got the Rocky Mountains, a desert, it's around the Kamloops area, large amounts of forests, and the Pacific Ocean. So really the only thing you're missing in BC is a prairie-like landscape where it's just flat forever like it is in parts of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. Number two, weather. Something that comes with the ranging geography is the weather. The weather is insanely different all throughout this province. Vancouver and on Vancouver Island, you're going to get Canada's mildest climate. Lots of rain, but it, it stays mild pretty much the entire year. And then in a place like Field, which is in eastern British Columbia close to the Alberta border, you will get a true mountain winter. It's cold, lots of snow, vastly different from what you'll get in Vancouver. In the summer, the interior, it's extremely hot, heat waves are common, and unfortunately, like we saw this summer, forest fires happen, and they happen a lot. Like I said, this past summer was insanely hot in the entire province. The entire province got blasted with a heat wave. So if you are moving to BC, be prepared for a hot summer. Number three, the cost of living. It's no secret that certain areas of the province have an extremely high cost of living. The real estate in the Vancouver area is far from cheap and it will take some sort of strategic planning if you want to move to the Vancouver area and you are not super well off. For example, in the city of Vancouver, prices typically compete with the city of Toronto in terms of renting and real estate. This is obviously a problem for a lot of people and money is always the first thing people will automatically think about while they're going after a place to live. But there's another major problem here. There is a housing shortage due largely in part to the cost. There is nothing available for what a lot of people can afford. So people struggle to find a place to live that's close to their job or close to where they want to be. There's a site I found which is actually, I found it to be pretty helpful while comparing costs between cities in BC. It's costofliving.workbc.ca. I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to check it out. Um, you can compare literally anything in BC and it's, uh, it's quite helpful. Number four, gas. I know this technically ties into the cost of living, but it's something that BC is notorious for, so I thought I'd add it in as its own thing. Gas prices. Fueling your vehicle in many parts of this province is significantly higher than most of Canada. As of today, September 20th, here's a list of some prices per liter in different areas of BC that I found on my Gas Buddy app that I use pretty much every week when I go to fill up. In Vancouver, gas was $1.55.9 per liter. Victoria, $156.9. Kamloops, $150.9. Pemberton, $167.9. And then here, this one's a little better. Dawson Creek, $127.9, which is much better. And to be honest, that's just better than most parts of the country right now. So as you can see, gas will cost you more in most areas of the province. Typically gas is cheaper in the interior, more expensive down in the lower mainland, as well as on Vancouver Island. And then in more remote areas of the province, you will deal with the ridiculous prices. But that's like anywhere in Northern Ontario, you'll get ridiculous prices too. But as we move towards using electric cars and they become more common, it's going to be a less of a problem for more and more people because they just won't have to fill up. So, it's, but it's just something to consider if you're not necessarily planning on buying an electric car or bringing your electric car or whatever. Just it's something to consider. Number five, travel advice. This one's a little different than what I normally do in these videos, but just hear me out. I have a few suggestions for you if you decide to move or just simply to travel to the province. First thing, 
drive from Calgary to Vancouver and then on to Vancouver Island. The Trans-Canada will be arguably one of the most scenic and beautiful drives you ever do. You will get to see different landscapes along the way, like I mentioned back in the first thing. Desert, mountains, forests, etc. Windy roads, so drive safe, but it, it's quite cool. And lots of awesome small towns along the way. The second thing, explore Vancouver Island. Vancouver Island is an amazing place to explore. There's so much to do, so much to see. I promise you, it is so worth it. Go see the Pacific, go touring through Nanaimo and Victoria. And of course, you have to head up to Tofino, especially if you're into surfing. And lastly, the third thing, explore the northern part of the province. Take the Alcan Highway up to Whitehorse. It will give you a chance to see some remote towns and cities. And it's a whole different feel of the province, so I highly recommend doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was province number 10 out of 10 on the list. So next up, we have the three territories. I'll do a video for each one of them. Let me know what order you want me to make them in. Also, we're getting super close to hitting 1,000 subscribers. So be sure to click the subscribe button, turn on post notifications, so you know whenever I upload a video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.